All right. Welcome to Door Done CD, the only podcast where you can hear all latest in television and entertainment news with too many hosts with exactly the same opinions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is John Berwick, and a third one is Kyle Bridger. Um, I would say that I am the Greg to John's Tom to we'll give Dave Roman. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I I think that's a pretty good group. The, th- yeah, the three amigos good... here. All yeah. right. All right. I, I like the choices. Uh, no one's Kendall. No one's Logan. We're not the top dogs nope, in season three dogs. of Succession. But who knows who's going to be the CEO when it all comes to an end. I don't know. This thing is going fast. Mm-hmm. Succession is back. I'm so excited to talk about it. We got the premiere of that show. We got a premiere of another show that's actually airing its finale today only murders in the building and then we're going to catch up on two shows we've talked about the premieres of now we're going to talk about the seasons of midnight mass and squid game but that's all at the end first we have this first segment oh, and john just what is it in and out points Yes, it is in and out points. And last month, we discussed the possible strike of 60,000 union members in the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, Moving Picture Technicians, Artists, and Allied Crafts of the United States, its, its territories, and Canada. This group is called IATSE and uh, includes everything pretty much in below the line uh, categories in production, grips, cinematographers, editors, hairstylists, a lot of groups. And without them, TV and film, well, the production would just cease. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be over. Uh, so we got some updates with this story that we were talking about. And we, were, we were worried that a strike would happen. And a strike authorization vote with 98.7% support was, was ready to go. It was voted on. They were going to strike. And yesterday, October 18th, was the date that was set for a work stoppage. Uh, some of the problems they wanted addressed include excessively unsafe and harmful working hours, failure to provide reasonable rest during meal breaks and between work days and on weekends. So they were they were ready to go. Mm-hmm. You know, spoiler uh, to a thing we're going to talk about a little later. It hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, that's a, a key word there because... It's still moving. It's still moving. And one of the things I sent to you guys I want to talk about first is Hollywood Studios obviously were concerned about this strike. They were worried that it was going to happen. So late last week, many studios had an idea to keep productions moving. They began scheduling unplanned six and seventh days and additional overtime to get things done. That's how we're going to do it. There is a strike about excessively long work days extra overtime into weekends and six and seventh days. So to, to combat this, we're going to schedule some overtime and some six and seventh days to get the job done. Kyle, brilliant idea. Brilliantly dumb or brilliantly tone deaf is more like it. It's just like, this is the exact thing that they're, you know, fighting against. But I mean, we knew it was going to happen with, right. I, I felt like it was coming. As soon as I heard that they, because they don't want to get behind. So then, oh, what are we going to do? Schedule in advance. And what do you need to do in advance? Work, you know, harder, longer hours. The very thing that these people are asking that you not do. Um, it's just a little absurd to me. It's really, really tone deaf. And I don't know. It's just silly. Yeah, It's like that. that is literally what they're striking about. Do you want the strike to start early? Because they might start it early if you're going to be doing this. It's it's just wild to me that the, the the choices that these groups make. It's just come on, like read the room, <laughs> like yeah. But I don't know. It, over the weekend though, it looked like there was a, a silver lining, a bright spot, and all this because on Sunday, Variety reported that negotiations for Yahtzee and some major studios are closing in on a deal to avert a strike. A lot of details are unreleased to the public, 
but reactions, at least so far, started positive and then moved to mixed. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are saying it doesn't go far enough. There's a lot of different issues in this. Um, there's the, one of the main sticking points is in the 10 hour turnaround category. That's like the time between the wrap and the next day call times. They, that's their rest period. 10 hours is not enough. Uh, a Dolly Grip in the Variety article said, why would I be excited about that? That's the same S that's already in my contract. Mm. I already have that. Yeah. So why am I excited about this? And then a DP in LA said, basically nothing has changed and I've not heard a single person saying they will vote yes because that's the next step in this year. Yeah, they have to, yeah. They have to agree to this. Sure, the, the leaders in IATSE in these groups have come up with this contract, but now the contract has to be voted on. And if this agreement is not ratified, if it doesn't, you know, get the votes, we could still get a strike. Mm -hmm. It's not over yet. Mm -hmm. Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to unions and especially like a huge one like this. I mean, you get union heads that sometimes are kind of working, you know, in cahoots with some of the people that they're supposed to be, you know, I guess not fighting against, but, you know, fighting for the people they're fighting for are not necessarily the ones that they have, they have their interests in. Right. So, um, you know, I think it's going to come down to what the members feel and this is a huge membership. So I feel like uh, the power and the numbers, if they don't feel like they're getting a good deal, we could see this easily struck down. And I got to say, I think that um, I think they hold a lot of leverage. I think the only difference might be that they um, it's like, how long can people last without a paycheck really? Yeah. And do the, but the, do the producers want to play that game? Because we're talking almost like a full stoppage what are we gonna have like zoom the zoom calls airing podcasts i, I don't know what happens they're gonna have know? to be live because yeah the editors won't work on that and they're gonna have to do their own makeup and hair because they're not gonna work out. it's yeah. like it's it's tough and especially after the year the year and a half the two years that we've had with with covid there's already been so much work stoppage that mm-hmm. yeah, some of these people in unions while they don't like this deal they need the work because it's, it's just been such a hard time. So it's like, um, it's, it's a very complicated issue. It's, yeah. It's not going to work for everyone. We're gonna have to see how the vote goes, but just when you think we're like out of the woods on this, it's, it's not over yet. So I think I just, I don't know. To me, it's like, uh, this whole COVID pandemic thing is making people think of reevaluate their lives yeah, and see what's, worth their time and effort and i mean for a lot of these people it was probably just the you know the the hamster wheel every day every day and you're not thinking about uh everything that goes into making your life the way it is and then you get like a little bit of a a time to reflect and you're like wait is this what i want to be doing you know and then you get an agreement and it's like wait this is the same stuff i don't want this same stuff anymore and i think um, across several industries, not just the movie and TV industry, it's like people are starting to realize like we need to start doing stuff that is good for good for us because you know nothing is guaranteed uh, and COVID made that painfully clear. Well said, well said. Yeah, it's the times they are changing. Uh, yeah, it's a wild, wild time. Mm-hmm. Well. Uh, it kind of leads into our, our next in out point because, you know, people are starting to go back to maybe the work using mass transit. The New York subway system isn't necessarily the, the most friendly and safe place to be. Uh, but one man named, named Thomas Knox wants to change that. What can I do to connect people? We're so disconnected when we're traveling, he says. Well, he came up with date while you wait. Two chairs, a table. A flower in a bottle and a board game is all it takes for some people to sit and get to know each other as they wait for a train. It's become so popular. It's been nominated for a New York Emmy Award and will become a new TV series on a local 
NYC channel. Date while you wait. Kyle, do you want to watch this show? Do you want to be on the show? Are you ready? (laughs) I've not heard of this. So this is interesting to me. Um, I also think it's probably uh, my worst nightmare. Uh, But I mean, it could be the new equivalent of speed dating. If people are not, you know, I think this works as on a smaller scale. I don't know how the TV show is going to work out because what do we know about TV shows? It's like everything's a little bit longer and it's, it's just like, it takes like that, um, that appeal out of it. You know what I mean? This seems like if it's homegrown, like web series, a like that's Quibi where it, show. Should... it would be a good Quibi show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like in that, how to with John Wilson, like yeah. that kind of vibe, if it has that kind of vibe, I think it works. Anything more than that, it just feels forced. Um, because the whole idea of it is is interesting. I don't know if I would enjoy it, but maybe if you're just there and they come up to you and we're like, hey. But it, I'm just wondering, how does it work? Does it Is it like somebody comes up to this person that has like the... Yeah, is it always the same guy? Like, or yeah, the two random or people? Or... Like, he chooses two random people? Like, yeah. what is this? How does the scenario work? Well, from what I've gathered in the article, despite the name, it isn't actually about finding love, but about connecting with fellow human beings. He's he's spoken with like ex-convicts, CEOs, and everyone in between. And it's become more, like as it's become more popular, just people will sit with him for 20 to 30 minutes and and talk. So it sounds like he's kind of like the host and he's kind of like interviewing these random people, you know, kind of getting to know them, connecting with them as they wait. So yeah. It could, could be interesting. Yeah, you could get, you know, you never because there's so many people in New York City, for example, that, mm. have, you know, wild life stories. And it's like, yeah, you can sit down and connect and learn about them. You know, you can't judge a book by its cover and you could find mm-hmm. out all these great things about people. Mm. But it uh, reminds me of like the humans of New York kind of thing mm. uh, has that vibe to it. Um, but it is an interesting concept. And, you know, it's trying to reach that personal connection we all have a story and i think those of us that live in new york it's just like you know i think i think the the subway on any given day is probably the bane of our existence yeah. um, to make it a little bit brighter is probably good i it's probably probably not the best covid show for thinking about yeah, it yeah. you, you want to spend the least amount of time in a subway yeah. not talk and play games you know touching the game and sharing it and you know for for 30 minutes at a time like i mean in the summer i don't want to spend 30 seconds in the system i'm gonna hang out there for 30 minutes with the with the smells and the heat and the but but even in the winter time it gets really cold i'm like oh the flip side of it oh man hang out i'm just yeah. yeah i'm just thinking like uh I'm in such a rush, but here's the problem with this idea is that I'm in such a rush all the time in the subway. Like I've got everything down. Like I'm checking that MTA app and I'm like down to the minute that I would just be like flustered. If somebody was like, Hey, do you want to do this? I'd be like, no, no time. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm, I'd be more with a Billy Eichner approach of things. It's just someone running up to me with a microphone hey you got a question where is it uh, sure and then he just like you know say one <laughs> yeah. thing and run away i have that yeah. kind of time i don't have time to play a board game for 30 minutes yeah but, but it's an interesting idea i mean some people have nothing to do and they hang out in the subway and maybe they have a story to tell so yeah they, they definitely will uh we're looking at tv shows and strange places and our next one is also that the super bowl is coming up very fast, uh, surprisingly. And the NFL has some big plans for the halftime show beyond 2022. The league is looking to expand the show beyond the confines of the 12 minute interlude during the game. Cause Pepsi's contract is up after 2022 and they're looking at potential partners uh, that they're going to take over because quote, the halftime show has become, has been morphing into a platform. What so does what that mean, they, Kyle? Into a platform. I uh, that it becomes bigger than the game itself. So what are they going to have a concert during the game for those that don't want to watch the game but want to watch the halftime show? I don't understand yeah. that. Oh, who who thought? Oh yeah, let's take football. 
and just not show football for half an hour. Like, that makes no sense. Well, what if we did a concert and then just like halfway through the concert, we just, you know, do a quick like, uh, you know, pickup game, just, you know, a little quick check into the into the Super Bowl, little football game, (laughs) show a commercial or two and then go back to the concert because that's what the people want. Mm. Um, I think. I think it's like the idea is like more of like probably some kind of weird synergy multi-platform performance because they cited yeah. in this article the 2015 and 2017 documentaries that were done on the performances that Katy Perry and Lady Gaga did. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, they did their Super Bowl performance. I'm sure they, they filmed stuff for months. They edited down to a documentary. Will that be a documentary? Will that be a TV series? Could it be a podcast? Like it's just, what can we do besides just the 12 minutes to really just squeeze and milk this thing? I mean, they could do anything they could do because we do know that there are people that watch the Super Bowl, but they're not into the Super Bowl. They're just into the halftime show. We could do a, you know, like the red carpet, but for <laughs> this, the show, we could show the makeup room, the green room, like, Oh, we see them getting ready. But I, uh, I don't know. Is that take away from the spectacle of it? Like, but what, I don't know. What, what makes that special that it couldn't be on its own? Why does sticking it between two halves of a football game make it any more of a show than doing it directly yeah. after, doing it the next week, doing it yeah. in the off season? Like, hmm. I mean, you can go see a show. You go see a Katy Perry show if you want. Like, how how is that show different than this, except for that it's squished between two halves of a football game and a lot of people are already watching. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, why? Yeah. It's well, you're, audience. You're, they're there because of the football game. I, I, I feel like moving that, that platform and that, that, um, that setup and pushing it aside is, is just going to make people tune out. No, like it, 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 is, is, do you guys not think that like, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it, it depends on like the timing of everything where it's like, yeah, like, cause people are going to be watching the, halftime show regardless because people are going to be watching the super bowl like they're going to watch that so they're definitely going to be watching that but i think it's like okay a week later it's like oh you liked that performance well here's now a six episode making of series dropping on paramount yeah. plus about the making of the series and it's like so i think but, it's gonna be very niche for probably that artist or people that are into the tech yeah, behind that, it because yeah it is a technical <laughs> achievement to see how they take the field and turn it into a, a concert venue and then turn it back into it but outside of that, yeah, it's a it's a concert. That sounds but, like a really great idea, but don't make that that don't mess with the format that's already existing. Cool. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm all for making of. I love I love that kind of stuff. But uh, I, I, it seems like they want to make the the actual performance longer, unless I'm misunderstanding. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of details that we still don't know. It's a lot of talk right now because again, it's like we're still like a year or two away from whatever this is but they're this they're just exploring things now it's like you know because yeah i guess the music industry i guess benefits a lot from the show a lot of artists want to do this to get that kind of exposure and it's like okay well what can we do to make it even bigger but it's like i don't know how much bigger you can make the super bowl because i feel like any making of show any documentary you're not getting the audience of the super bowl not even close not even a tenth of the audience it's it's this is already the main attraction. Everything else is a sprinkle. Yeah. Two things that I'm kind of thinking about that you brought up. Yeah. They considered a big deal, but am I right in thinking that the NFL wasn't paying these people, right? The idea was that they would get their exposure. I thought that was a headline that we had uh, back in the day was that the NFL was not, was having trouble getting a halftime person because they didn't want, to pay them. And I remember the weekend pouring in a ton of his own cash Mm. for the halftime show itself. Also it's, it's the NFL's idea to have something bigger, right? So it has to have (laughs) something that's branded with the NFL. So Mm. a documentary to me does not make sense for, you know, some person, unless it's affiliated with the NFL because the NFL doesn't care unless the NFL is affiliated with it, right? So there has to be something that's benefiting the NFL for whatever they're thinking about. Because, so my thinking is it has to be 
it has to be the day of because that's where the audience is, right? Yeah. And maybe it's like those commercials where it's like, click here if you want to see what the weekend's performers are doing or how they're getting involved. Like, that's just my stupid idea mm-hmm. offhand. But to me, it has to impact the NFL directly in that moment or a way that the NFL can profit afterwards. Otherwise, uh, like the documentary, I think would just affect the weekend or whatever. Yeah, unless the artist, it's like presented the by the NFL was, yeah. or something. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe do a choose your own adventure leading up to that week before. Okay, choose the song, choose the outfit, choose this. And then it's like you're... I don't know, this leading up to it. So then you have a hand in the creation of mm. the performance or something. But I don't know. Uh, we got this this lineup, though, for this year. We'll, we'll quickly touch it, talk about this. Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar are, are the performers for the 2022 Super Bowl. Are you ready, Kyle? Uh, I mean, there's some... I feel like they're old school. They got a mix. They got a yeah. mix in there. Yeah, like talented old school, like hip hop R and B, uh, mixed with Kendrick Lamar, who's pretty popular now. But um, yeah, I think it's an interesting little mix. Um, I, I like it because it's like the Avengers assemble instead of just having like hmm. one artist, and then you're always like, oh, who's going to be the special guest? Who's going to be this? It's like you got five, you know big guys in here you know or yeah they're gonna i'm just thinking about like uh, for a show right yeah. so i think mary j blige could be like a showy type of person and eminem might be able to like be a sh- more showy person but like when i think of dr dre i don't think like bruno mars like show yeah, like a show true. you know or snoop dog like i think snoop dog is great but i don't think of like a showy person i think he's like a yeah, because uh, Bruno Mars individual. in the weekend, yeah, can can you know dance and perform and yeah. do this whole thing, and so I so I wonder how those how all of them are gonna collaborate, and I mean because there are so many, they might be able to work off each other and make it a really good show, but um, and I do think it will be good, but um, uh, do, do you know what I'm saying? I just I, know what you're I, 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 I know think what you're it uh, it doesn't have that that. A wow factor or the 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 michael jackson factor you know mm. that kind of thing i got you i got you uh, all right one last in and out point night uh i don't know maybe the halftime show could go to the to the movies one night only in movie theaters that's what they could do with uh, nicole kidman yeah distributor neon has lined up an unusual release plan for the can jury prize winner memoria this stars tilda swinton instead of playing in multiple theaters all at the same time you know like a normal movie the rollout will be deliberate and methodical um let's see deliberate approach from moving city to city theater to theater week by week playing in front of only one audience at a given time what do we think about this Guys, I don't even know if I understand. understand. Yeah. One theater at one time. That's it. So if you want to see this film, you're not going to go see it at the, the Regal at uh, Court Street or the AMC at Lincoln Square. It's at it's at this one theater in this one city this weekend, Kyle. If you okay. miss it, you're going to have to go to Chicago. Uh, the next weekend, you got to go to Miami. You got to okay. go to it's that's it. That's it. It's only tra- playing in one theater at one time, one city. What a freaking terrible way to market your own movie. Yeah. How? But, yeah. How? Many, not, not only, <laughs> not, like, ignoring if the movie's good or bad, if you start getting some, like, hype about it, nobody can go see it if they want to. If like, you missed like, it, you missed it. If That's you missed it. it, you missed it. So then, then what? You got to wait for it to come out on DVD or something? Like, how are you possibly gonna be able to see this movie it's interesting you brought up dvds because there's another wrinkle in this as well one theater at a time only in theaters because it will not become available on dvd it's not going to become available on demand it's not going to be on streaming platforms it will be a never-ending movie 
image art exhibit. That's it. It's in movies, movie theaters. Once a year at a time. Is that an infinite? Who knows? Will it last forever? And it'll always be in one theater somewhere in the world at one time. It will never be on DVD or on streaming. As they say, I'm just sure Chris Nolan is like, I know, was, why didn't I think of this? I know. I was going <laughs> to say, this sounds like a Chris Nolan wet dream, man. It just <laughs> sounds like what he's always wanted. But um, I'm going to go for three months and then run out of budget. Like, wh- uh, how are they going to do this? They're trying to create the uh, illusion <laughs> of exclusivity, right? So that the idea is that everyone in New York will be lining up to watch this movie they hear so much about and they're willing to pay it's a crazy FOMO. a crazy amount of money that i guess would only really work to me it's only going to work in the big cities if yeah. it happens at all so new york city la maybe chicago but you get in the midwest towns people are like i don't i don't give a crap you know what i mean it's just like i don't I, to me it doesn't make sense to me you'd want more people watching it or to be able to watch it. And I got to be honest, you got to think highly of your film if you think that it's so good that you've got to come watch it in theaters because that's the only experience you can have and you're going to want to see it that way. Like, uh, it just seems so self, uh, self-indulgent. self But, you know, everyone has their own idea of what art is. Maybe it's just, this is their idea of art. It, it's a wild choice, especially after the year we've had of like, oh, you know, this movie is going to be day and date. It's in theaters and at home at the same time. And uh, this past weekend, Halloween Kills, number one at the box office, also available day and date on Peacock. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's wild that like okay, there's so many options. And then this movie, one option. Mm-hmm. That's it. Uh, the launch is going to kick off at the IFC Center right here in New York City, December 26, one week only, and then it moves to the next city, and then the next city. And I, I know like a lot of these Oscar awards movies, they always kind of do something like this, where they start off in four theaters, two in New York, two in LA. Then it goes to like 12 theaters, a couple in Chicago, a couple in Miami, whatever. And then it goes, it expands like those, those Oscar-y, limited movies and then they get bigger and bigger and bigger to get the buzz but this one will always stay at one and then it's like okay well if i'm i'm out of town that weekend i guess i miss it mm-hmm. i i might have went to it but i missed it and i'll never see it yeah and it's like you're limited you're it's like a weird way of like yeah it's like it's like it's like a museum like if you want to go see it you have to whatever painting you got to go to the museum that's your only chance to see it but mm-hmm. it's like also Maybe I want to see it. And now it's like exclusive and I, I lose the chance and you're kind of limiting art in a weird way. It's yeah. So we got to start a business where you take a video camera into the theater. No, no, no. <laughs> but the, the, the thing I'm thinking about is, okay, so this will actually be uh, Columbia's submission for best international feature at the Oscars this year. This is their submission for nomination. And all I could think of is, you're going to tell me that there's going to be no Oscar screeners for this because they're saying yeah. no DVDs, no streaming. Anytime there's an Oscar stre- yeah, screener, no. it leaks. Yeah. It will be pirated. It will be put online. So there's no when they way. say, oh, it'll never be online. Okay. Whenever the Oscar sh- uh, screeners come out. Yeah. Look for it there. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. So. All right. Well, that is it for in and out points. We got, a lot of shows to talk about. The first two are in this next segment. Uh, it has we have to go back. So guys, send us back. back in time. We're back, back, baby. baby. Gotta get back in time. It's finally here. Succession, <laughs> season three, the big premiere, Sunday night, October seventeenth. After a two-year absence, of the Emmy award-winning drama series is back, picking right up where the season two cliffhanger left off. It's civil war within the Roy family, and battle lines are drawn. Who will win? The Waystar Roy co-founder, Logan, or his troubled son, Kendall? Here we go, Kyle. The season three premiere. 
You pumped? You excited? How was it? Yeah, I was really excited for it. Uh, excited that it's back. Um, it has been a while, and it picked up right where it left off. The writing is still so good. There's so many good lines. And even I follow, like, um, no context um, succession on Twitter, and it's just like, oh, yeah, I remember that line. And a lot of them, looking back, it's like in the context uh, when you think about it in the context of the show, it's like, damn, that was a good line. So the writing is still fantastic. All the characters, uh, you got to like love them or love to hate them, whatever. Uh, and it, we all have our favorites uh, with the show. But um, yeah, I'm just happy it's back. Definitely. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. It's been a wild ride with Succession in the podcast. I remember, I think when we all watched the premiere way back when, uh, we were like, like ah, should we care about these like yeah, rich people? And then, you know, but as the season went on, people were talking about it. They gave it our shot. And then when season two came, I think I was like a season two premiere. I think we were all back in. We we're like, OK, we're in now. Yeah, this is working. And then I recently did a rewatch of one and two to get ready for season three because it's been so long. Mm -hmm. And just you see it from a whole new side. You see all the seeds that they planted. You see how the characters kind of morph into what they are. And mm -hmm. I have way more respect for it. Even I already had a high bar for it. I even have more yeah. respect after watching the cliffhanger, uh, the, the seasons, because everything that they built up to that cliffhanger at the end of season two, we're going to get paid off. Now this feels like almost like later breaking bad where, where the house of cards was set. It was built through those two seasons and mm. now we're knocking it down. Now mm. everything is here we go. This is it. This is what the show has been building to. And even this first episode, it felt, it felt like, I mean, they were constantly moving literally and figuratively yeah. the edit. Logan's team was going from, you know, the helicopter to the van, to the plane. And they were making deals along the way. And it was just, if it, it gave us that energy the whole yeah. time that the episode just flew by, you felt the frantic energy that they, they got yeah. this bombshell dropped on them and they're feeling it. We're feeling it moving right in. Mm -hmm. it, you bring up some of the lines and already like the comedy I thought was just, it was hitting immediately. We were right into it. Uh, for me, of course, from with Greg, 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 Greg. Yes. he is failing upwards yeah. so much, dude. He's nothing more than a hype man at this point. <laughs> like the, he's the, the media man. monitor actually. Yeah. The hype, yeah. Yeah. The hype man who like is just there. Just, <laughs> just to give like the the rapper his due you know because that's all he's there for kendall because kendall knows he's pretty much useless yep yeah he's he put him on like social media duty and he's like oh you're trending above tater tots uh <laughs> the pope follow you well a pope uh, <laughs> and then uh but, like when he's walking to the 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 car after the big uh a press conference there and he's like, no comment no comment no comment and yeah he's like you don't have to say no comment <laughs> like, that is the comment is no comment but uh and then he, he compares this situation of them in the car to the famous oj oh, situation man, with the bronco chase good line and we get i think it's like oh actually it's not really that because none of us killed anyone and then we get a line from kendall which kind of leads yeah. into my discussion of kendall here who says I didn't kill anyone with a, a weird smile a smile? Yeah, he's so Kendall. I was a big fan of Kendall like character last uh, the past couple of seasons. Um, but this episode, I was really not a fan of Kendall. Like I, I um, cause I saw a little bit of his dad coming out yeah. and especially in the PR pitch, but this line specifically, I mean, this line in and of itself mixed with the fact that his father got him out of trouble and he thinks that he's going to take over this company. All his dad has to go, well, go is, oh, new, you went the nuclear option? I'm going to go the nuclear option. No one's having this thing, yeah. you know? Because it's a very, very complicated issue at hand here. Yeah. Uh, with, with, with that and like to, to bring that up, it's like, yeah, Logan has this kind of trump card. It's like, I know what you yeah. did in the season one finale. But then I was thinking about it. That would also implicate Logan and yeah. his cover-up, 
which is in this situation they are now. That's another cover yeah. up on top of the cover ups he's in yeah. trouble for right now. So it's yeah. just like, oh my God, it, they're in so much hot water. Yeah. But to see this kind of change in Kendall, because all of season two, he's this sad puppy. He's just deflated. And you kind of see it like when he's told in the finale of season two, it's like, you're not getting this. You know, you're not going to become the CEO. You're going to have to take the fall for this. Sorry, but that's the way it is. You're not a killer. And then immediately he does the press conference and kind of loses like this, the, the stutter that he has. And he delivers just boom, 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 the, this press conference. Mm-hmm. And he becomes that killer. And you see like this transformation in the opening bathroom shot. Like, you know, he's in the bathroom. He kind of has that little, oh, what did I do? What did I do? And then he psychs himself up. And then for the rest of the episode, he's this, he, he thinks he's the man. He's, he's an addict that now is getting high off of this. Yeah. He's the hubris. He feels unstoppable. He's inter- interrupting that, that marketing pitch. He's inviting his new girl to his ex-wife's place <laughs> where he has now set up shop. Like, I know. Wait, so remind me again, yeah. was the, the scene where he's in the bathtub, was that after he had, after? I believe it was after the, the press conference. Okay. In the season two. I believe that's supposed to be like sequential. I don't, because it's like he's, he just delivered all this. Like, this is like, there's no one doing this. Yeah. You said it. <laughs> because t- to me, there's still a little bit of, like, he can't even talk to his father on the phone. Yeah. He has to go through like an assistant of some sort it's like you still can't handle not you know not talking to your dad so he still can't hang with the beast and that's why i don't know if he's gonna come out oh he's not and the the thing is it's like it's we've seen this before in in the series with with him and his addiction he's only going to crash and burn Mm -hmm. he's at this high point right now but it's gonna end i mean it's like yeah, I mean, he did kill someone. Logan knows that. Logan's fighting against him. Like, will he use that card? Like, there's so much going on here. And you, you could see a little bit with when he talks to his ex-wife, he, he goes there. He's like, oh, do you see my performance? He's yeah. Like, yeah, i kind of been busy. You can you almost see a little bit of the deflation there. It's like, wait, what? Yeah. Like, like, you could tell he, he wanted the attention. He wanted the uh-huh. feel of, them. yeah, you did it. Like, he wanted the the that Oof, yeah but he didn't get it from her and it's yeah like, uh-oh but yeah it, it's a very complicated situation he's in because like there's the line in the trailer where it's like you want to take your dad down without implicating yourself but mm-hmm. also you want to do it without damaging the company that mm-hmm. you would lose at a, a shareholder meeting like it's it's a, it's a tough game of chess yeah that he's in right now and yeah but that's one side yeah and then you got Logan. You got Logan, and he's going to be uh, stepping back <laughs> as CEO. Yeah, stepping back. At least on paper. And he's still yeah. going to be the puppet master that he is. Uh, but we have like, well, you know, who's the successor? Who's going to be the new CEO? And everyone's kind of pitching themselves uh, in the meeting. Um, which is like, why do people do this? They like throw themselves out there and it's like, yeah. you know, you know, you know it's, it's not, not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. And pretty much he, he says like three things where it's like he wants he wants a kid, you know, one of his kids. He wants someone with experience and he wants a woman. Well, it's like between the three candidates, they all kind of have one or two of those things. They don't have all three. And the candidates yeah. really gets down to is, is Shiv, Roman and Jerry. Those are the three candidates uh-huh. kind of going into this uh, CEO battle uh what were you expecting with with those three we'll eventually get to who it is but what did you think it was going to be i just always think i don't know what it is with the the kids the kids will never be able to come out from under their dad's shadow and be their own person and so i think the one that's most likely to do that would be shiv um roman is a just a just a no-go and his dad knows it and how he was talking to his his, how roman was talking to his dad 
he talked himself out of the job because his dad was like, knew you knew immediately. He's like, he's talking in circles. He doesn't have the killer instinct that his dad wants. It's like, dude, you're, um, it's like, uh, dad. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it could be this or maybe this, or, you know, if you think so, it's just like, early, he was like early Kendall and it's yeah. like, and like, yeah, he's like, I want it, but it's like very childish. And then I love it. As soon as like he hung, he hangs up. It's like, all right, Roman's out. Yeah. <laughs> just because, yeah. Yeah. They don't have the juice. And I think Shiv is the one most like her dad, which would seem the most obvious choice, but there's something there that's holding Logan back because. Yeah. Cause I mean, we've seen some, some mistakes that Shiv has made throughout I mean, I, I saw it more in a rewatch of season two that she really let it kind of go to her head. Uh-huh. Uh, the whole like possibility of her getting it. I couldn't tell for a while if if Logan was actually just stringing her along, you know, to get her because she was with in politics. She was with working for somebody who was going to run for president that was against all the politics mm-hmm. that Logan, you know, has. So it's like I want to break this up. But the only way I could do that is if I offer you the job here to get you away from that job. And so it's like, it's, he's playing chess with her. Yeah. I think that's going to come back to bite him because like in this episode, one of Shiv's jobs was, was to meet with Lisa, the lawyer that she used to know uh, completely blows up that like, it's just a p- terrible job at trying mm-hmm. to get Lisa on their side. Um, and you know lisa ends up going with kendall so it's like well you know she got a strike roman got a strike it's going to end up being jerry jerry's Mm. the winner and all this but i think this is going to create enemies with within the family because there's this civil war that's brewing Mm. Uh, tom and shiv they did not end season two well together um you know and i thought maybe at the end of season two maybe he's gonna jump ship and go with kendall but now after this first episode, I'm, I'm going that that Shiv is going to be going with Kendall because I think she's going to feel just burned by her dad again yeah. Yeah. after um, the multiple times of not getting this uh, and, CEO job. Yeah, and Kendall's already reached out to Shiv. Yeah. And saying, she's missing and get- at the end of the episode. Where is she going? She's going to Kendall. I yeah. That's the thing. Um, and here's the thing also that I want to bring up about the lawyer in – a line that the lawyer says, which is a weird way to phrase this. So the lawyer said to Kendall, yeah, so you know, you know, with your sister, we have like a a friend relationship. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? It makes it sound like there's something more going on there. Like, were they in some kind of like relationship? Were they, you know, kind of like screwing around with each other? Or, or was like, what's just more of like an acquaintance of relationship? Because it's like, you could just say we were friends, but it's like the, we kind of had a friend relationship. It's like, were you actually friends or like, were they like fake friends that were just yeah. like pretended to be friends? Like it's, yeah, it's just such a weird thing. And then if she comes back and gets on the, uh, you know, the side of Kendall, then we've got this, this bumping of heads between the lawyer and Shiv and what, it's in the best interest of Kendall. And if I were Kendall, I don't know if he cannot see through it. Like Shiv wants the job too. Mm. And she's always going to be gunning for it as well. So to me, it's like, you can't have any of your brothers or sisters on this situation. Yeah. yeah the only thing I think of is like, yeah, you could at least promise her something, whatever COO or something underneath that to like, you know, yeah, you, it's still better than what you have now. Cause you're not going to get CEO ever and mm. in dad's plan. So it's, yeah, there's going to be a lot of combinations and who knows if they're going to stay. Cause it's like right now it's like, okay, you got, you know, Kendall, Greg, uh, pr- possibly Frank. It sounds like, you know, he's open to the call. He took the call. Logan's already like, I don't trust you. So it's like, okay. Yeah. Jump. Uh, and on the other side, Logan, Roman, Tom, maybe like Connor, who the hell knows where Connor is. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it's just, you know, you would think, um, let's see, Greg's uh, grandfather or dad or yeah, grandfather there. Uh, that's Logan's brother is going to be like, uh, yeah, I hate my brother, but I also I wanted you to drop this 
thing with him. So maybe I'll join your side and use some money there. It's like, yeah, very complicated. This whole family is complicated and it easily yeah. could switch back and forth at any point. Like, of course, of course. Yeah, it's it's such a good show. Such a good show. Yeah. I'm very excited because, you know, we discussed the trailer and coming attractions. And I think only like 90 percent of what we you know saw in the trailer was was that was it, this episode. So yeah. it's like there's going to be a whole other eight episodes of stuff we haven't even really seen yet. So I'm excited. Yeah, that's great. Excited. All right. All right. Well, that's it for Succession. We're going to also talk about another series. Had a premiere, but this was the series premiere of Only Murders in the Building. The first episode was called True Crime. It actually dropped on August 31st. Today on Hulu is the finale. We're just talking about the premiere. Uh, to catch up on this. Been getting some good reviews. This comedy mystery series follows three strangers who all share an obsession with a true crime podcast. And after a murder in their Upper West Side apartment building, the three neighbors decide to start their own program covering their investigation of said murder. All right, John, what did you think of Only Murders in the Building? Hmm. I think overall, and, and, and this might be a little harsh, it felt a little campy to me. Um, I don't know if it really was my thing. Um, I, I feel like uh, Martin Short's character was trying really hard to be like the front. And that was it. Like there, there is, I don't feel like there's no substance to anybody else. Um, so uh, that kind of took me out of it a bit. Um, my, my hope is that maybe it will figure out its feet, but yeah, that, that was a little distracting to me. And I know we, we plan on talking more about that. Um, other than that, uh, there were one or two things that I, I saw that I was just like, why? Like, uh, stylistically, I, I just, I guess I didn't get it. And, uh, again, I'll talk about that when we get more into it, but, yeah, I wasn't overly impressed, I guess. Yeah, okay, I hear, yeah. I wasn't, like, after the buzz I heard, I had such a high bar for this show going into it. I don't know if it cleared the bar for me. I thought it was fine. I thought it was an okay show. I see the seeds that they're planting. Um, you brought up Martin Short. I want to I want to go to him uh, first. Sometimes he can feel, uh, he could be hit or miss for mm. me. He could yeah. be way over the top sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I we get a bit of that here. A um, lot of it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he definitely feels out of place kind of in this threesome. And maybe that's the point. Because I was actually surprised between the 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 chemistry we actually got between Steve Martin and Selena Gomez of all people. I'm like, I never thought this this would happen. But then Martin Short is that kind of odd person out. But I actually liked him a little bit more when we we're doing the dramatic stuff with his son, when he dialed it back, mm -hmm. it was being dramatic. Was, I actually look okay, okay. I like this character. I'm, I'm into this performance, but yeah, when it's the over the top financially challenged Broadway director of it's just, it's just, okay. You know? Yeah. But yeah. um, yeah, Kyle, what did you think of the show and of, of this performance? Yeah. I thought it was just, you know, I thought it was okay. I didn't love it. Um, I think it's clever and I think it's witty and I can see the, the care that was taken in it. Um, but at the end of the day, it was just like, do I want to, if I'm choosing entertainment, am I going to choose this as my entertainment? And for some people, yes, it is. And they, they will find it clever and witty and it, they'll relate to it and, and whatnot. Um, but to me, I was just like, I, I'd rather be entertained by other things. Not saying this is not entertaining. Um, it's just not my, I think, style. Um, but I can I can get with the clever jokes, the witty jokes. Um, I think I think also the premise of it, at least in my mind, I know a lot of people love the true crime podcast, but that the the conceit of it seems dated to me and yeah. maybe it's just me like if this had come out maybe two years ago three years ago the idea of it would make a lot more sense because we had not only the shows but the podcasts and all that now i feel like you have to really be in that world for this to hit home whereas if this had come out a little while ago 
it would have been right in the zeitgeist, if that makes sense. It would have fit in right with everything else. Um, but since it's now, um, I feel like you have to be in that world to kind of uh, vibe with the show more. Does that make sense? Oh, I completely agree. I, I felt that too. And yeah, I'm not going to deny true crime is a huge thing. It's huge. Yeah. Podcasts right now. It definitely is my favorite murder. It, it's there. Like people love this stuff. Mm -hmm. I will say though, I feel like everybody in the world was in on it. And I had to look up the, the time frame on this in 2014, because mm -hmm. that was when season one of Serial dropped. I feel like everybody was involved mm -hmm. with that. And I feel like a year or two after that, I can't remember the exact timing. That's probably when Making a Murderer was. Yeah. I feel like that was mm -hmm. like the heyday mm -hmm. of true crime, yeah. true crime podcast. So it does feel a little bit dated here. You could even tell like in the music, uh, they're, they're going for Serial. The music yeah. is very reminiscent of the Serial theme song. And it's like, yeah, and you know, and everyone has a podcast at this point. Like, I, it's like, so everyone is jumping on that. Of course, they're going to start a podcast. Yeah. I, I, I will say, I love to think that like people listen to our podcast like this. It's 8 p.m. on a Tuesday night. <laughs> I got to rush home and sit yeah. with a glass of wine and watch Do or Done and See. It's just yeah. like. And like, the idea that they're all, you at know, the same time. at the same time of everything is silly, but it, you know, it, it's, it, it works for the show. Yeah. It's just, it's like, yeah, I just remember like, yeah, listening to Serial when, I, you know, whatever, you know, when I was brushing my teeth or, you know, driving to the office, it was just, you know, mm. it wasn't like, oh, I got to watch it at, as soon as it drops. But yeah, um, I think, yeah, one of my other biggest complaints is that um, Steve Martin isn't playing like his normal role and it feels weird. Like he's not playing like the straight man, you know, you know what I mean? There's, there's, it, it's not humorous and that that. I know that he's more than that, but it just feels weird seeing that, you know? Mm, it almost takes yeah. me out of it a bit. Yeah, it's like, I don't know if they're going to, you know, yeah, the straight man in this. It's certainly not Martin Short's character. Uh, you know, we, Selena Gomez's character already is raising red flags. Maybe that's like already too on the nose because she's supposed to be there in this apartment building to renovate it for her aunt. But like already it's like, Huh, uh, you're dreaming of murdering the intruder. You know, it's like, okay, that's kind of serial killer tendencies. Mm. They did the fake out in the beginning where there's like this big cold open. And uh, they, they've been doing this so much now. It's an overused trope at this point where this big moment happens. She's over a body. Oh, it's not what it looks like. Cut to two months earlier. And it's just like, and then yeah. maybe you have to go up to that. And probably that moment, it's not until the finale. So it's like, mm. So we got that. And then this kind of big moment at the end, which oh, I was like, oh, this actually did perk my interest. I'm like, oh, this yes. is interesting. Yes. When uh, she tells a story about, yeah, having these like Hardy boys back in the day, solving mysteries. And well, one of the Hardy boys was somebody in the building that was murdered. So it's like, oh, wait a minute. You know, this person in the building when they were in the elevator together, didn't seem like they knew each other. Yeah, so I know. something happened there. Yeah, you know, be a great twist the for the podcast. Music, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I will say that little end. I was a lot more interested because I, I was like, wait, how does that? How does that all work out? And clearly, we don't know all that there is to know about Selena Gomez's character. We've got this. Um, uh, Steve Martin's like Lucy who's Lucy because he says he likes to be alone so they're they have a little some breadcrumbs that are make me want to see go a little bit further and see what the deal is but I also worry it's just going to be like uh explainable away in one line and we're right. back to you know back to the same old stuff I hope there's more meat to it you know yeah definitely and the season was recently picked up for another one. I thought it was going to be a self-contained miniseries, but nope, season two is coming. It's been a big success for Hulu. Um, one thing I do want to mention before, you know, we kind of move on is I think something that John might have mentioned here. There was a point where I almost got a Mr. Corman vibe from the show, a little bit of the whimsical thing. And to me, it felt out of place in this context. Uh, Short uh, mm. is, is visiting his, uh, his son. 
he goes off the porch and he falls backwards and bounces back up. And it's a callback to something he mentioned earlier about this Clear mm. Balloon Broadway piece that he saw. But <sighs> this is kind of out of reality. And it just to me, I honestly, I honestly thought he's falling backwards thinking that this was going to happen. Right? And then it was going to be boom. Yeah. And then he was going to be, you know, in a cast for the rest of the season or whatever. But no, he bounces back up. Steve Martin throws the frying pan down. It bounces back up. So I don't know what any of that means. If it's just <sighs> supposed to be, eh, it's a metaphor, Dave. Just you yeah, know, whatever. right. But like, I, I don't know. It, it it really that was the only thing that took me out of it because like the the CGI for the like bounce effect of the floors like rubber banding was like terrible. And what impact does this have on the story that they're throwing things on the floor and it's coming back up? Like I I can kind of see it for his character because he saw that that or dream that piece or whatever but everybody else is doing it too and they haven't they don't know what it's about so it's just like yeah that is true i i it makes I, a little I, bit more sense for him in that moment to kind of feel that bounce back up because he's gotten this thing that it was like oh he was down on his luck but it's like oh no the podcast is back on we got a clue it's like oh my luck is turning around boom i'm back up i i but get like what the they're going them, for yeah, yeah i get what they're going for that everybody has something finally to to kind of push them along in their lives instead of just kind of being stagnant but uh, there's got to be a better way to to do it than this like <laughs> well, you're throwing a frying pan on the floor and catching it and then throwing an egg in the garbage like wh- what does that mean like how does how do you <sighs> i don't know somebody is somebody's writing a long youtube comment <laughs> clearly this is <laughs> uh but i don't know um you know, yeah, like I said, I, you know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't in my favorite, but it, it was all right, the show. And I might have this show on in, either in the background or come back to it later, but it's definitely not appointment viewing for me right now. Are you guys going to check out any more of the show, you think, John, shaking your head? I, I got to have some concrete evidence that it's worth seeing at the end of the season. And Kyle? I might watch another episode just to see how the... Because I was intrigued at the end, um, but uh, I'm not. I don't know if I'm gonna watch it right away. I might come back to it later on. All right, I hear you. I hear you. Well, there's two shows we talked about the premieres of, and we came back to and we finished. Uh, we have just enough time to do a little bit of a a quick check, if you will, on them. Oh, that was me. Oh, John. <laughs> quick check. Yes. <laughs> Quick check, John. It's so quick. <laughs> so quick. So quick we forgot it. Uh, and you know what? And post note will know. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Here we are. We're going to talk about Mid- Midnight Mass, the mini series on Netflix. Uh, Kyle, thoughts on Midnight Mass? Uh, I liked it. I-, I think I'm a little bit different than you. I didn't like it as much as Haunting on Hill House. Um, but. Uh, it, it gets a little bit too talky for me. And if you do this, uh, because there were several times where I had to, uh, like I watched it on my phone and then I would come in, I watched it in like little bits of pieces, but there are several motions throughout because it's so talky where it's like literally zoom in and then zoom in and where I was fast forwarding and you could see the motion and a good production wise to make a, to make a very talky thing entertaining, um, but uh, it could be uh, a little bit talky. I'll just say that. But I-, I will say the performances are really good. The guy who plays the uh, priest is really, yeah. uh, really good. Um, the girl who plays uh, Bev Keen, uh, she makes you hate her, that's for sure. And, you know, it gets into this world of is – catholicism cult like should we reframe how we think about these things or you know what what is religion in today's world and how people use it uh and how it affects people it really it brings up some good points and so uh anybody who's been kind of touched by religion might um benefit from watching this yeah i agree I agree with a lot of what you said for me, actually, I think I might, I don't know if it's recency bias. I might actually have enjoyed this more than the haunting of blank series. Um, definitely more talky, probably not as quote unquote scary yeah, as those def- other no. ones, 
but I was more into this. And I don't know if it was because of the, the themes that you mentioned, or if it was the performances, including, as you said, um, the priest, uh, uh, Yamit or Hamish Linklater, I believe is his name who played father, Paul, uh, Bev Keen, as you mentioned, someone that you love to hate. And then you get this, you know, this finale that like, you knew it was coming at some point, but man, it, it was still riveting. It was this like Jonestown, like poisoning chaos and mm. just everything was happening all at once. Nobody was safe. It was, it was, it was a, a, a big ending. Uh, a lot of people lost it. We, I won't say specifically who because of, of spoilers, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot. Uh, I think kind of the series kind of really uh, led by these performances and, and some of these monologues, you know, it did get talky, but some of them were really uh, well done, but yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. We're going to move now quickly to talk about the show. Netflix's most watched series, a show that while it only costs $21 million to produce it, will create almost $900 million in value for the streamer. And that's squid game. All right, we all finished Squid Game. We're going to spoil it a little bit here. John, overall Squid Game thoughts. Oh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I would definitely say that if you're listening to this and you haven't seen it, um, skip ahead a minute or two and don't don't listen to the spoilers we're about to talk about and go go watch it. Um, I really enjoyed it. I, I think that it was uh, uh, well-crafted. Um, I kind of wish, like we had discussed, some of the... Uh, nuances were explained a little better um, in both the speech and uh, there's some written text as well when one of the guys is going through the files that kind of fleshes in some of the background on um, his brother and, and how he got to where he is. But uh, overall, yeah, it was it was great. I really I really enjoyed it and I, I uh, a little little hesitant for the potential next season, which I know we're going to talk about, but we'll we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> yeah. I believe the creator spent like over like 10 years, you know, working on this, pitching on this. So I'm hoping Netflix is like, okay, we need the new drafts by Monday. It's like, no, yeah. no give them, give them time to work yeah. on this. Um, I, you know, yeah, I, I went through this series. Uh, some of these games were so tense, even though you knew contestants like four, five, six is going to the end. Y- you knew that, but one of the most tense episodes, probably one of the, my favorite episodes was episode six with all the, with the marbles, and because uh, mm. it was like this bottle episode of like this mind game of because you knew you knew, but it was still heartbreaking mm. when they said it. It's like, yeah, get into teams of two. It's like, OK, these two, te- you're going to be playing against each other. So then you're like, no, I like these two. I like these two. And you knew one of them was yeah. going to be gone at the end of this. And it's in, you know, it's just you lost the old man there. Quote mm. unquote. You, you lost <laughs> Ali, like you. It's just oh, it's just gut and, punch, gut punch, and then yeah, you the, the I, sorry the the uh, uh, excitement and drama in in uh, this episode that has no action like like yeah. it's it's all playing marbles. people playing marbles and it's so tense and and you're having people having these heartfelt conversations and and some people who are arguing with each other and and you know uh, every man for themselves or no we both got to go or you know no you know it, it mm. was it was such such it was so well done that to make you feel all these different emotions from people sitting on the floor playing marbles you know <laughs> and i was gonna say like like well throughout the series you learn more about the operation and how it all works i feel like though episode seven which followed this episode episode six was maybe hurt by following it because that was the vip episode mm. and and at least for me and I think I saw a lot of people on the internet also say this pretty over the top stilted American dialogue or yeah. ADR or whatever and, it was you know, almost so much. That was, it was pretty comical. If you ask yeah. me, that was probably fine for people in Korea who don't speak a lot of English because it's very clear, but yeah, I think for, for our audience, it, it seemed a little weird, but I, I think I saw an interview with one of the guys who, who played one of these guys and he was like, yeah, it, it feels weird. It, you know, but um, yeah, I, it wasn't a bad episode, but it, it definitely it, was... it took me out of it a little bit mm, of like, yeah, oh, OK, like everything else is so good. The production design, yeah. the acting, the music, everything is so good. And then we get this. Or it's like, oh. where'd you find this guy? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I <laughs> Are you friends with him? Yeah. 
I know it was wait. I this was the moment, Dave, when I was like, "Oh, wait till you get there, and we got to talk about it." Because this was the moment where it kind of took me out of it. I love this show. I yeah. loved it, and I binged it. And it's the first thing I binged in a in a while. Uh, this hardcore, but um, the the yeah the dialogue there, and also the over explanation of of what was happening. Wow. They should go first, but really, that's bad or something. Yeah. Like it was just like, all right, come on, let's. Well, uh, let's... If you can't choose sixty nine, ninety six will have to do or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, come on, dude. Yeah, oh it's like, is this what God. they think Americans sound like? I, I mean, probably. that is probably close. So what people yeah. in America sound <laughs> I like? I know, but still, but yeah. still. Uh, and then, real quick at the end, uh, we get a little hint of what season two could be: uh, four, five, six doesn't get on the plane to visit his daughter. He's going back. It looks like to take them down. I'm obviously worried about this. I really don't want just four, five, six. I don't even know how he could do it, but to like go back and play again or into the game to do it from within the inside. Cause I feel like we almost got this, this season with, with the cop who kind of infiltrated yeah. this group. It's like, man, you could have told me in episode six or whatever. He, the cop, okay, teams up. Hey, four, five, six, you, 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 you. We're gonna take them down. We're gonna overthrow it right now. Yeah, and it's like that could have happened. And I feel like, are we get how many how many things are we gonna repeat again in season two? Mm. Even if it's a different story, is it gonna feel a lot of the same beats again? Which I'm worried about. Is it gonna be the same yeah. games? You know yeah. how how are they gonna resolve mm. that? And and uh, again, you know, like I said, uh, a little bit of spoilers here. Uh, we discover that. And and part of this is hidden in in some of the Korean writing on the files, but that the the brother of the cop is the um the big game master guy, and um he got there by playing the game, and 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 somehow ended up being in this position. So is is four five six gonna try and maybe do that, or is he gonna try and maybe disband it all? We don't know. So there mm. is some substance there, but yeah, I feel like it was a poor choice to not go visit your daughter. <laughs> yeah. especially when you have your, your all your, all the troubles in your life except for yourself just are basically didn't want to gone. See his daughter with that haircut. <laughs> yeah. The red I mean it's it's a nice cut but the color I don't know. He, the, the daughter's going to be like, "Really, dad? Really?" Oh man. But uh I don't know. Uh Squid Game, I think we all recommend it. Definitely check it out. But uh, one oh. more thing is like also he's going to go back inside like he has to either a rejoin the game, which means he has going to have to kill more people, yeah. which is what he doesn't want to do, or he's going to have to somehow infiltrate something. And they know they already know or suspect that he's up to something. So a it's, it's like, battle. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's so kind of, I don't know. Also mm-hmm. with how many people were able to infiltrate this, you know, now it's like how is this thing still a secret from like 2015 or 2012 or whenever it started you know that is true the amount of players they had it's just how many missing people are there how many winners and it's just like yeah it's a lot of people involved in this squid game um but all right yeah we're gonna have to wait a while probably to see season two of squid game but it's definitely 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 coming there's Mm -hmm. no way netflix is passing this up yeah but all right that is it for this week a little bit of a longer show but we got a lot to squeeze in because we're off next week we're gonna be back tuesday november 2nd with another hbo series another classic series curb your enthusiasm it's back plus finally we've all been waiting for it dune <laughs> dune is here we're gonna figure out what dune is and talk about <laughs> dune uh so two hbo max type things you can watch uh, make sure you never miss an episode by going to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Add to we're done so you can follow us so you never miss an episode. And those episodes will be on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the blog, doerdunsey.com, and Twitch, twitch.tv slash doerdunsey, 8 p.m. Eastern. Again, Tuesday, November 2nd is when we're going to be back off next week. I got to thank both you guys for joining me tonight. I couldn't do it without you guys for John putting the show up on apple Podcasts. thank you so much sure all right that's all we got until next time i'm david allen i'm john berwick and i'm cobberger and that's all we got for door goodbye everybody <laughs>